Welcome to Swamp Shangri-La, Rule Living. Here in the heart of South Carolina Low Country. It's a nice 85 degrees out today. It's not as quiet as hot as it's been, which is nice. We got the old oak right here that you saw in a previous video. And uh, we're gonna be cutting this thing up, slabbing it up nice, doing some good live edge slabs. And we'd like to invite you to watch the video for us. So we're gonna be truing up this end right here. A little chainsaw work, and that way we have an even start for that blade. You can see the wide end is on this side, and we'll pretty much be cutting wide to short. We're also going to be going over some rigging with you guys, and I'm going to show you how to uh, do a controlled roll using straps and the physics of something in a bind and rolling. That way you can negotiate something alone as long as you have the equipment that will lift it. We often emphasize here at Swamp Shangri-La that you need to have the ability to work alone. Most people have to work alone. But you need to have the equipment and you also need to have the knowledge base to do so. A lot of people will try to wrangle some heavy stuff using their back. Folks, best thing I could tell you, that's not a good practice. Because anyone that's ever done heavy lifting for a living, once you get a hernia or you blow your back out, it's kind of hard to start over again. So we always emphasize proper use of machinery, proper use of rigging. So stick around, we're going to show you how to do this. cross section what we got going on kind of hefty little piece of wood right here you want to bet this thing weighs every bit practically 100 pounds so let's get a show on the road
Uh, let's go over some rigging here. We've got a two inch strap, 12 uh, feet long, right here. You can see on the tag. You got a vertical rating, straight pole, 6,400 pounds, choke rating, 5,100, basket rating, 12,008. Two inch strap. What we're going to do is go in a choke configuration for this strap right here. Now, let me explain first what we're going to be doing. We're going to be throwing the strap over the log. And the idea is I want this knot on top. So that's what we are going to go for. So I got this down in the bunk. Now, I have this where I can get to it. I'll explain something to all you fine viewers out there. So you have it where your strap is not twisted, the strap is on even lay, meaning it's flat. Right here. And it's very important for what we're going to be doing. It's actually important for anything you're going to be doing when it comes to rigging straps. You see you're clear to bunk, everything. Now let me explain to you what we're doing. You can see how this strap runs on this eyepiece right here, on this pass-through. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate it a little bit. Put it in a little bit of a cinch. You can see right there how it wants to naturally become in a bind and cantilever. When we place tension on this with a loader, when this strap becomes under load, you will see, and you do this in a gradual manner, you don't just snatch up on your loader, your cable, your winch, whatever you're using. It's a nice easy motion, it's a nice even application of tension. Whether it be with the forks, the bucket, chain, chain fall, whatever you got guys and the idea is you ease it into tension get the strap taut then after that it's just a gradual ease of the hydraulics or whatever you're using the idea is this is in a position to bind because i know earlier when i said that people are like how are you going to rotate something that's in a bind so let me clarify, your strap will be in a position of bind. So your strap will then be lifted straight up and allow this log to roll nice and gently. So let's get all rigged up here and uh, we'll see if I got an idea what I'm talking about. Stick around.
What do you think about that, folks? Pretty good looking wood right there. I'll tell you what, you can definitely tell the difference of that bandsaw cutting into this oak and cutting into a pine. I'm talking night and day. We got us a nice uh, live edge slab right here. I brought out a spare saw blade just to do it. I'm gonna tell you, this right here, that's nice. I can make some good stuff. We're gonna see about using it to make some good stuff here coming up. So we're gonna keep on cutting. You guys enjoy. Not too bad looking. We're cutting two inch slabs. It gives us uh, some room to play with. Make some nice things out of it. Well, we're gonna keep on going. I gotta change out the blade on this sawmill. Tell you what, this oak isn't any joke, folks. Not a joke at all. Stick around.
go. You can see, it's got a pretty good profile on this big old meaty slab. He's got a little bit of weight to it, guys. You toss this thing on the forks.
time going the wrong way. If you stand on this side of it, it looks better. All right, we're done with this oak that we cut during a previous video. It was uh, pretty much a dying tree I'm going to go with, purely because the way the bark has been slipping off the tree. So basically, the tree was in the process of dying, so really, depending on how long it would stay there, stand up, you could have a heck of a hazard coming up in bad weather if we get around here. So, which makes it a harder wood to cut than say green oak. We encountered some problems during our cutting operation. We had uh, tracking issues or sawmills, so we got that fine-tuned. And we also had some issues with our blade. Along with the tracking issue, which tracking issue goes along with operator air and keeping a tally of things and on and on. But the blades we were previously running felt like there was a lot of resistance when you pushed into the tree, into the wood, because it's such dry wood. Now, they're good cutting blades, don't get me wrong. So we made it a point to order some uh, wood miser double hard nine degree blades. Now, these blades are rated for cutting frozen wood, so they're a very solid blade. So we got bundle of those and we tried those out and I must say I'm very pleased with the cutting of the blade and actually I see a little bit of a difference so I must say that's going to be our blade of choice our go-to blade so you got your own backyard set up not that I claim to know anything about wood cutting or saw milling we're taking this venture together but you guys want a decent blade to put on your little backyard sawmill? Go for Wood Miser Double Hard 9 Degree. Check out if they got in your size and uh, try it out. I think you'll be very pleased with the cutting of it. So, as you can see, we have some good looking uh, oak right here in front of you and everything. We're very happy with the results. And, um, like I said, the blade just cut through the tree just nice and smooth and with no resistance just walked it through and very pleased with it and it appears the finish has actually got a better finish to it too is and that goes with cutability because of the saw blade so we hope you enjoyed this video and we we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one be good now